Good morning to all of you. Those of you I've met before, those of you I'm getting to know, it is so nice to see um, some old friends as well as friends to be. Um, I'm grateful for this opportunity to be with you this morning. Um, I'm most grateful for my friend and former student, Beth, and all that she has done and all that she continues to do and all that God will continue to do um, in her life. The text that has been read is, um, it's an important one. It's situated within the context of Jesus' calling of the disciples. They're getting to know each other. He is getting to know them. They are getting to know him. He's been preached about by John. And now the community is coming together. A new community is coming together in the region of Galilee. If you would pray with me for just a few moments on the subject, this must be the place. Gracious and eternal God, I thank you that you have answered our prayers and become our salvation. We thank you for the ways that you show up in our lives, in our community, in our world. We stand in awe of the wonders that you do and we continue to desire nothing more than to dwell in your presence. So now as we share this word, as we hear this word, let it be a word of hope, let it be a word of, just of liberation, let it be a word of righteousness and love for your sake. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. This must be the place. Um, I'm, I mentioned that um, Beth was a former student of mine, and I was trying to remember which of the classes that she took uh, from me when she was at Western and I was a professor there. And I thought it was a class on social justice movements, the history of social justice movements, but it wasn't that class. The reason I remembered that class and thought she was in that class, because she came up to me one day in the hallway and asked me, is this a class where you learn how to use a bullhorn? And I said, no, so she didn't take that class. <laughs> What's exciting about Beth is that she understands that the work of justice, the work of ministering to people, isn't really about using a bullhorn. It's about gathering with God's people. It's about learning what the issues are. And it's about figuring out a way forward in the way that God would have God's people to go. It's about community. The text that we have before us today is also about community. It's about Jesus gathering the disciples around him to learn, to prepare, to grow, and to go out into the world. There's an increasing awareness of the disciples in that moment that 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 they were witnessing was special, that it was meaningful, that as this com new community grew, it contained the potential for a new prophetic paradigm, a prophetic paradigm that would transform lives, transform communities, and even transform the world. It will turn out to perhaps be a different kind of community than what they expected, but it would be a powerful community nonetheless. I grew up in Texas, and one of my favorite songs, our favorite groups growing up was the Talking Heads. That kind of dates me and tells you how old I am, but the Talking Heads were one of my favorite musical groups in the 80s. The song, This Must Be the Place, was one of the first songs that I remember listening to. Now this song, if any of you are familiar with the Talking Heads, you know that it was out of pattern for the way their songs typically had been. It was the last song on their second studio album, and it had modest success when it was released by itself, but then when it became part of a concert album, it achieved critical acclaim. The song is a love song. 
with a simplified melody. The lyrics, if you pay attention to them, this must be the place, are the singer, is the singer talking about how he longed for a place called home only to find himself in love with a person that was home. He envisioned going somewhere, being somewhere that he called home, only to realize home was about connection and love. This, in some ways, reminds me of what's happening in this text. The disciples who have followed John the Baptist are going somewhere they think will be the kingdom of God, only to find themselves gathered around Jesus in a community of love. There's this unexpected quality to the spread of the gospel, an unexpected quality to the emergence of Christian community that is different from what they thought it would be. Tomorrow is Martin Luther King Jr. Day in the U.S. It's a day where we celebrate and commemorate and honor the legacy and life of Martin Luther King Jr. Now, anyone who's paid attention to King's life and knows his story knows that he didn't start out to be a leader of a civil rights movement. After he graduated from college and seminary and did his doctoral work, he ended up in a Baptist church in Montgomery, Alabama. He was called to a place to be a pastor. He was called there to administer church budgets, to make sure that the lights stayed on, to preside over weddings, to preside over funerals, but something else happened. Before he knew it, the needs of the people he pastored gave new meaning to the, go- to the call that God placed on his life. He was drafted into leadership of the Montgomery Improvement Association, and before you knew it, the demands of Jim Crow lynching and segregation were demands that led him to become a leader in the bus boycott movement and the rest, as they say, is history. The place that he was called to took on new meaning. The place where he ministered with people took on new urgency. So much so that it radically altered what he and the church thought was going to be his ministry. I think this is the nature of pastoring in the prophetic Christian tradition. And Jesus demonstrates this throughout his ministry where what we think we're looking for, where we think we're going, turns out to be something totally different. The disciples whom Jesus called were going about their business, thinking that they were just following John the Baptist's lead and headed for the kingdom of God. But Jesus sees something else in them and calls them to be part of a new kind of community. To move toward God's true promise for the world. Jesus in some ways, is able to see something inside of them, something inside of this newly formed community that they don't always see in themselves. They are going to become the seeds of true Christian community, recognizing that God's plan God's love is bigger than what they might have imagined. Their own naive ambitions meet up with God's love, and the rest, as they say, is history. You know, Bonhoeffer, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, speaks about this. He speaks about the ways community forms 
around Jesus. It is clear from Bonhoeffer that the community that gathers, that calls itself a Christian church, gathers around Christ as the center, not just in a building, not just in a particular place, but they gather in Christ himself. To partake in communion is to recognize the centrality of Christ within the community. It also means a commitment to ministry in a particular context at a particular time that transcends the space that you may think you're in. What it means is understanding the true needs of the community and recognizing that Christ calls us to engage the community in new and powerful ways. I'm reminded of the passage where, um, in John, I think it is, where, uh, where Jesus says, can anything good, or the, where the disciples ask, can anything good come from Nazareth? Do you remember that passage? They were focusing on a place of origin without really understanding where Jesus was actually taking them. I think if we're honest with ourselves, we sometimes trick ourselves into thinking we're going one place or we're doing one particular thing only to find out that God has something more amazing and more powerful for us. The Christian faith, in some ways, is a simple, naive song. It's a song about love. It's a song about God's love for God's people and God's people gathering together to love more people. One of the most amazing things about my time at Western was students like Beth. Students like Beth who came into ministry, came into seminary in a setting that they didn't always think that they were prepared for, with students they didn't always get along with, with subject matter that they didn't always connect with, not my classes, they always connected <laughs> with my classes. But finding a way into ministry in the way that God called them to. Some of you know that Beth was part of a journey group, uh, Violence in the City, that we spent two and a half years traveling all over the country and exploring issues of violence in communities. Not just violence that we see or violence that seems visible to us, but the structural violence within our communities, like poverty, um, the violence um, that comes from racism, violence that comes from sexism. After we finished this journey together, we began to see violence differently. We began to see the power of communities to engage the structural realities of oppression and to be a better and more impactful presence in the world. It's not surprising to me that Beth was called to City Church. It's not surprising that Beth was called to City Church because Beth has a heart for community. She has a heart for God and a heart for God's people. The call to ministry, much like the disciples in the text, is a call to not be in love with a place but to be in love with God's people. God's heart is with God's people. 
And sometimes being with God's people means addressing issues of homelessness. Sometimes it means addressing, addressing issues of racism. It means addressing issues of poverty. It means addressing issues of sexism. All of those things may exist in a particular place. But when God's people are called together, in this place, around this table, they are called to a higher purpose. They are called to love each other. They are called to be inspired together. They are called to move out into the world and to care for God's people. For me, that's what Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy is. It's about gathering with God's people, understanding what the needs of God's people are, and going out into the world to make a difference. This is what I love about City Church. People who don't belong together, gathering around Jesus for the sake of people who don't belong together. This must be the place. This must be the place where God's heart is. This must be the place that God's people are. This must be the place where God's prophet is. And when God's people gather at a table for a simple meal, they gather together knowing that God's love is with them, God's love empowers them, God's love inspires them to go out into the world and to do likewise. This is the gospel.